それでは次の講演を始めさせていただきます続いては脅威インテリジェンスによる中国の情報操作の分析についてチェ・チャンさんとシルビア・イエさんにご紹介いただきますチェさんとシルビアさんは、共に台湾のセキュリティ企業、チーム5、チーム T5 に勤めます。双方ともにインテリジェンスに強く、チェさんはサイバー犯罪地下市場に強く、シルビアさんはアジア太平洋地域の情報運用とサイバーポリシーに詳しいです。チェさん、シルビアさんからは、今回のテーマについて動画をいただいております。その間、ご質問があれば、後ご本人に直接お聞きいたしますそれではまず動画をご確認くださいハロー、Welcome to join our talk This presentation is about China's information operation My name is Zhe Zhang And my name is Sylvia We are the cyber threat analyst from Team T5 Threat Intelligence Team In the past two years Our threat intelligence about China's information operation has helped our partners in government agency and our clients in various industry to better understand the issue. So, without further ado, let's get started. Hi, welcome to join Team Device presentation about China's information operation. Today's topic is dissecting China's info op with threat intelligence. I'm Zhe Zhang. I'm the co-author of Tintify's Information Operation White Paper. I've been focusing on the information operation research and the underground market. In the past few years, I have been an invited speaker of many security conferences. In 2020 April, I was invited to be the speaker of a virtual training workshop held by the Taiwanese government, the VGCTF, to talk about the COVID-19 disinformation. I'm Sylvia Ye. I'm also the co author of Team T5's InfoOp White Paper. Apart from information operation, I also do analysis on cyber policy in Asia Pacific countries. Here is the outline today. First, we will give a brief introduction about what is information operation and why it matters. Then, we will have an overview of Taiwan's 2020 general election. And starting from Taiwan, we will summarize three key methods to see how China is launching its info up on social media. And last, we will have a QA section. So if you have any question during our talk, please just type in. Okay, so what is information operation? Information operation info up. Is also called influence operation or information warfare. The term was first used in the US military, meaning to influence the decision making of the adversary. And in the era of social media, the social media service is now the essential space for all people to exchange ideas and get the new, new information. After 2016 Russian interference against the US election, The world has realized that state sponsored information operation could be used through the social media. These authoritarian regions could use social media to launch info up to spread propaganda, disinformation, and even hate speech. China's info up could be categorized into two kinds of operations. First one is the other operation. Meaning the operations are openly conducted and without any concealment. We can easily identify the other actors as the agent of the Chinese government, like the propaganda and the misinformation spread by the Chinese state media and China's diplomats. The other one is more tricky. It is the cover operation, meaning the operations cannot be directly. Attribute to the Chinese government. The actors of the cover operation will be more aggressive to spread disinformation, conspiracy theories, and even perform doxing campaigns. For the past two years, in these major events like 2018 Taiwan's local elections, 2019 the Hong Kong protest, 2020 Taiwan's general election, and 
the COVID-19 pandemic, we all identified China's info-op campaigns. Our research has helped the government, the journalism, and the social media platforms, and many research institutes in these major events to better understand China's info-op's tactic, technique, and procedures. And in the past few months, we are now teamed up with our democratic partners for the upcoming U.S. 2020 election. Here is an overview of Taiwan's 2020 general election. From 2018 to 2020, Taiwan has witnessed the growing threat of disinformation to our citizens. It was observed that many malicious actors utilize social media to disseminate a huge amount of fake news, false information, and even hate speech. According to the Taiwanese government, the disinformation cases have reached the highest number in this 2020 election. The Taiwanese Central Election Commission, CEC, state that there are 128 disinformation cases targeting this election. In addition to the evolution in quantity and tactics, we believe that the dissemination of disinformation did not stop after this election. So, where did the disinformation come from? When we look at all the disinformation cases on the major SNS in Taiwan, such as Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Line, we discovered that many of them were started from the Chinese SNS like Weibo and WeChat. Maybe this is because Taiwan has a historical and cultural relationship with China, which makes the netizen in the two regions become highly entangled. This is be a possible scenario. However, in some cases, we are also identify the contents are directly copied from the official website of Chinese military, or they will directly amplify the propaganda made by the Chinese government. Taiwan's polarized political environment and troubled relationships with the Chinese government make Taiwan a primary target for China's info up. In this following section, we will leave Sylvia to talk about the TTP of China's info up. Hello everyone, this is Sylvia. Next, I will take you to look into the TTPs of China's info up. TTP is a very frequent term in cybersecurity. It means tactic, techniques, and procedure. Due to the time limit, today I will only talk about three methods used in China's info ops, which are the propaganda machine, political content farm and spam botnet, and the mobilization of patriotic netizens. To start with, the Chinese propaganda machine has built significant presence over social media platforms in recent years. The Chinese propaganda machine consists of the state media, embassies, and diplomat. Studies show that they have spent a lot in advertisement to boost their engagement on social media platforms. To name a few, in this June, the United States Justice Department published a report that disclosed state media China Daily has spent about 11 million US dollar on ads in the US newspaper, including the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Foreign Policy, and etc. And over 260,000 US dollar was spent for advertising over Twitter. So China's heavy spending on advertisement has boosted their influence in both traditional media environment and the social media platforms. So this result in a very significant numbers Let's look at the world's famous media outlets followers on Facebook. Currently, China runs five out of six media outlets with the highest number of Facebook following, which is the CGTN, China Daily, P24, 
People's Daily, Xinhua News, and Global Times. Even the BBC News is behind them. The number one on the list, CGTN, which is the English version of CCTV, has over 100 million followers. CGTN also ranked the fourth among the most followed pages on Facebook. The stat is really shocking because back in 2014, none of the Chinese state media had more than 3 million fans. We know that by having a large number of likes, a media can actually look very credible and genuine at first sight so they can cause the audience tend to believe their content because they have such amount of likes and followers. The reason why we have a great concern on Chinese propaganda machine on SNS is because they have a bad reputation of spreading misinformation and conspiracy theory. Since the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, they have put a lot of efforts to establish the image of China as a global savior instead of a troublemaker. So you can see the screenshot on the left is Hua Chunying tweeted a video by People's Daily, which showed the Italians singing Chinese anthem in Rome. That video was labeled as misinformation by Fact Check Center because the Chinese anthem was actually later edited into, into the video in the post-production. So on the right-hand side is the Chinese embassy in Italy. It posted a lot of tweets praising China's donation of mass and supply to Italy. Yet it was later revealed that those supplies were actually purchased by the Italian government instead of a generous donation. Not to mention Zhao Lijian, a Chinese diplomat who has been promoting the conspiracy theory of U.S. Army brought the coronavirus to Wuhan. Next, political content farm and spam botnet has become the amplifier of propaganda machine. In this year, the most popular Western social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, and Google, announced that they have been removed hundreds of thousands of fake accounts linked to China. According to Twitter, these pro-China accounts were involved in manipulative and coordinated activities. They spread geopolitical narrative favorable to a Chinese Communist Party and pushed deceptive narrative about political dynamic in Hong Kong. Even though the platforms are already so dedicated to remove the propaganda network, we still observe a considerable amount of accounts continue to boost the narrative of the Chinese government across the SNS. So here I will show you an example of how the spam botnet and content form amplify the content of Chinese state media. One of the main themes in the Chinese propaganda is attacking the Trump administration. So on August 15, the Xinhua News posted an article titled, The Politicization of COVID-19 Gets U.S. Trapped in Deep Trouble. You can see the highlighted sentences in the article was later become the material for spam botnet and content farm. On August 16, the article was first copied and shared by a notorious Chinese content farm called KK News, Tiao, And then the text from the article was spread across Facebook and Twitter via spamming accounts. We found that this account shows strong signs of automatic behavior because they simultaneously posted numerous identical contents on a daily basis. And their content are mostly copied from Chinese state media and Chinese SNS, such as Weibo. Also, we observed that some of the accounts in the botnets use mugshots as profile picture. These mugshots are often available on online forums and dark web. 
So from the screenshot, you can see the spam botnet simultaneously share videos that criticize the Trump administration, emphasizing the incompetence of the U.S. government to handle the pandemic. You can see the spam botnet use mugshots as profile picture, and more importantly, their username were made to look like U.S. citizens, such as Harmony Beckett, Holy Padilla, Rebecca Moore, Claude Ramizes, etc., etc. So we also spotted some cross-platform activities. Here's the screenshot of botnet spamming a video that accuses Trump of dictatorship on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. You can see that the video content and the caption are 100% identical. And again, our investigation found that the source of content was from ChinaShaokang.com, which is a national news site controlled by a party media outlet. This shows that not only do these spam botnets spread text and images, but they also disseminate video content. And this is harder for the authority and researcher to detect the disinformation campaign. The next one is the mobilization of patriotic netizen. Patriotic netizen, also known as the Little Ping, are notorious for launching trolling campaigns against foreign online user when they feel China is being attacked by biased reporting. The Chinese authority have recognized the power of the patriotic netizens. Sometimes, the regime will deliberately mobilize them to attack the dissidents. So last year, they have mobilized the patriotic netizen to launch a doxing campaign against the Hong Kong protester. For your information, doxing is the action to search for and publish the pri private information about a particular individual on the internet. Typically, is with malicious intent. So the context is, in the late August, there was an anonymous website that disclosed personal details of the Hong Kong protester. So on the right-hand side it is, is the screenshot of the website. The website describes the protester as troublemakers and foreign agents aiming to destroy the Hong Kong stability. Later, in mid-September, the Chinese state media, led by CCTV, posted a video on Weibo to promote the website. And then, the post by CCTV was widely shared and promoted by official accounts of the Chinese authority. Eventually, they successfully inflamed the patriotic Chinese netizens. Many netizens have joined the narrative and demanded those protesters to reveal their, their true identity. They launched several hashtag campaigns on Weibo, such as I dare you to pull off your mask and take off your mask movement. This has posed a great threat to the protester because if they are identified, they could face unlawful punishment from the Chinese government. Team T5 called this unique and organizational mechanism as digital propaganda formula, which is made up of four key components, namely state media, governmental affairs new media, communist youth league, and trolling army. We believe the regime has used this formula to influence and mobilize the country's netizen when they want to shape the online discourse in favor of China. One notable example is the cross-strait online disputes in 2016. That is the time when pro-democracy candidate Tsai Ing-wen was elected, and the Chinese patriotic netizen were mobilized to challenge Taiwan's election result. You may think the above-mentioned cases are serious enough. However, the situation can get worse when hackers enter the InfoOp threat landscape, and we call it an APT plus InfoOp attack model. Advanced Persistent Threat 
APT actors are typically state-sponsored hacker groups. They usually conduct prolonged and targeted cyber attacks to steal highly sensitive data. However, in mid-July 2020, we identify an info op that can be linked to a notorious Chinese APT group. We dubbed the info op as Operation Joker because the threat actor had disseminated disinformation about Joker, which is a messaging app developed by Taiwan's Research Institute. The app is also widely used by government units. So the actor claimed the Joker app and the Research Institute were hacked and many confidential data about military unit were exposed. Operation Joker took place on PTT, which is a popular Reddit-like forum in Taiwan. PTT has a special feature. The forum will display the IP address of the author of a post. We found that the actor had control about 20 Taiwanese IPs and 50 PTT accounts to spread the disinformation. Many of the accounts owner had later claimed, claimed that they have never posted an article about Joker. What's noteworthy is that we conducted an investigation to cross-reference the IP address in this operation with our database, and we found one of the IPs overlapped the C2 server of a Chinese state-sponsored APT group, which we have tracked for years. So the model we think the model is more sophisticated because a typical hack and leak operation is just a well-timed dump of stolen data. Yet, APT plus InfoOp could involve targeted social media campaigns disseminating disinformation based on highly confidential data. Such situation is super tricky for government units and fact check centers, and it could pose a great risk of national security. So, we think it is more crucial than ever to adopt threat intelligence solution to combat the issue. Our research has shown that these actors will keep evolving and changing their tactics over time. With knowledge in cybersecurity and the ecosystem of SNS, we believe our threat intelligence can provide instant insight into actor methodology and exposes potential risks. This year, we have published a series of white paper on information operation. If you are interested in our research on InfoOp, you can go to our official website to request for a copy. So that's all for today. Thanks for listening. Thanks for your attention. We hope this talk can help provide some ideas to combat the issue. Here is a short Q&A session. 